If you're a film photographer or enthusiast, then you might have come across this extremely sexy camera. The Hasselblad X Pen. The Hasselblad X Pen. The Hasselblad X Pen. Hasselblad X Pen. Hasselblad X Pen. The Hasselblad X Pen. The legendary Fujifilm TX1. This is the Fujifilm TX1, which is the Fujifilm branded Hasselblad X Pen. And they're essentially the same camera, so from here on, I'm going to be referring to both of them as the X Pen. The x pen is a stylish camera with a sleek classic design that complements its robust inner workings. The Hasselblad version comes in a black paint coating that with continued use over time will develop a distinct patina, while the Fujifilm version comes unpainted, bearing its titanium body in all of its pristine glory. Personally, I prefer this bare titanium look, which is why I went for the Fujifilm TX1. Unlike some panoramic cameras from the same era that just masks the film, essentially cropping the image, the x band is like no other with the ability to capture stunning, true panoramic shots on 35mm film. This means that it lets you capture sweeping vistas, dramatic landscapes or cityscapes, cinematic portraits, and dynamic street scenes. That is also why the x band is a difficult camera to use. Hello everyone, I'm Bon and welcome to my little space online. In this video, I want to showcase one of my favorite cameras, the x -Man. I've owned this camera for almost two years now and while I admit that I rarely shoot with this, it's always a joy to use every time I take it out on a photo walk or on a trip. I was really drawn in by the panoramic aspect ratio. It just seems like almost all images taken with the x -Man look like they are still from a movie. However, like I said at the beginning of this video, this camera can be quite difficult to use. But not because it has a bad user interface. I actually find that it's quite easy to use with all of its dials and knobs and simple menu system. I think it's difficult to use because composing an image with that wide panoramic aspect ratio is challenging. Let me explain. So this here is a typical 35mm frame. It has an aspect ratio of 2x3 which is often considered easy because it's a relatively common and intuitive format. It isn't too wide or too narrow on either side, so it works well for a variety of subjects and compositions like landscapes, portraits, and everything else in between. One composition technique that works well with a 2x3 aspect ratio is the rule of thirds. It's a popular guideline that divides an image into thirds both horizontally and vertically. The points where these lines intersect, called power points, are often used as points of interest in a composition. For example, if you are taking a landscape photo with a 2x3 aspect ratio, you might position the horizon line along one of the horizontal lines of the rule of thirds grid and place a prominent landmark at one of the power points to create a more interesting and balanced composition. Similarly, if you are taking a portrait photo with a 2x3 aspect ratio, you might position the subject's eyes along one of the horizontal lines and place their face at one of the power points to create a more balanced composition. Easy. By the way, you don't always have to use the rule of thirds. It's just a basic composition technique, so I'm using it as an example. In contrast, this here is the panoramic x -Pan frame. As you can see, it's almost double the typical 35mm frame, and it's obviously much narrower on one side. This is why composing a balanced image can get a bit trickier and less intuitive with the x -Pan. For example, if we go back to the rule of thirds technique, you'll notice that there's a lot more space between the points of interest now. And sure, we can still position our subject in one of these power points, but I find that this can lead me to neglect the surrounding space, and frankly, I've taken photos with the x band that I think work better as 2x3 images. Which means there's really no reason for me to have shot them with a wide aspect ratio. I was just wasting film space. On another hand, it may be tempting to simply center the main subject in the frame, which can result in a static and less interesting composition. Don't get me wrong, you can still get a composition by placing a subject in the center of the frame. However, it's also easy to ignore the power of negative space and balance in creating compelling images with this approach. Furthermore, when working with a wide aspect ratio, you'll have to pay attention to a lot more of the space when composing your image. 
And this extra mental load will slow you down. If you're outside taking street photos, well, you might miss some shots. Lastly, on a more technical note, even a slight tilt on how you hold the X-Band when shooting a photo can lead to a prominent slanted horizon in your composition, which you can fix in post, but you will have to crop the image. Okay, so I just made it sound like it's super hard to get a well-composed image using the X-Band, but it's really not that bad. I find that the more comfortable I get using it, the more intuitive composing with it becomes. As with everything skill related, the more you practice, the better you get. It's just rough because you only get 20 or 21 shots using a 36 exposure film roll in this camera, so practicing can get expensive. A few weeks ago, I went out on a photo walk with my x pan paired with a 45mm lens. I used the role of Lomography Color Negative 400 and walked around Young and Dundas Square and Moss Park here in Toronto. Here's the first shot of the roll, just getting warmed up. I thought I liked how the light was falling on these set of old buildings on the street, but I ended up tilting the camera quite a bit. And as you can see in here, it is pretty wonky. <laughs> I ended up not straightening the horizon too much in post because a lot of the image will get cut off if I do. Here I thought a shot of this person buying something from the street food stand would be interesting. I got a bit closer for this shot, but I think it would have been better if I got low to take a worm's eye view and included more of the buildings and signage in frame. Like this next image. I like this one. Here, I place my subject closer to the edge of the frame and simply let the busy background trail off and fill in the negative space. Okay, so I walked away from Young and Dundas Square because I got bored, and as I was walking around, I saw this light filtering into a construction scaffolding with a colorful mural. There was also this lady wearing red walking there, so I quickly rushed to position myself and took this shot. This is one of those images that I think would have worked as a simple 2x3 or even 1x1 image, but I think the shadows on the outer portions of the frame do help bring the eyes toward the main part of the composition, so I'm happy with it. This is the same vibe as the previous image. I love how I capture the guy perfectly in mid-stride between the shadows. Here, I was interested to capture something interesting with the mural and the light, but the traffic was so slow moving and I was impatient AF. So I just took this shot as soon as a person walked in between the two cars. Not the best, but it's okay. In this one, the yellow storefront juxtaposed with a cyclist wearing blue caught my attention. I hesitated to take the photo first because I thought it can just be a 2x3 image, but then this other cyclist came rushing from the other side so I quickly took the photo. I think this image would have been stronger if I took the shot a split second faster, which would have placed the other cyclist closer to the rule of thirds, but I'll take it. Here, I really like the sliver of light hitting this iconic yellow building. I wish I would have pointed the camera higher to get the tip of the roof though. Same here as well, the roof got cut. I think that's my problem with rangefinders. Rangefinders typically show some extra space beyond the frame in the viewfinder, and I think I sometimes forget to consider that. <laughs> Okay, so I really like this one because I thought I was being smart taking a photo of a guy with a hat in front of a shop with hats on display. <laughs> Here, I thought the light was amazing and there was a cyclist that could be my subject. 
I think this image would have been better if I was standing further to the left, but I couldn't reposition myself quickly enough, so this will just have to do. <laughs> For this one, I think I was just interested in this shop's display. I think those are chocolates, and they look yummy. I really like this set of murals here, they're so well made. I don't know who the artist is, but I've taken a few photos of this already. I was wondering how to compose this with the expanse aspect ratio, but this guy wearing orange came along and I just quickly had to snap a photo. In the end, I think this photo works more as a 16x9 image, but I also think the wider photo works well to let it breathe more. I think the bluish tint on either side of the image balances the orange out. As I was taking this next shot, I thought it would be one of those photos that would be better as a 2x3 image. But I actually like this shot wide. I think the repetitive windows and other geometric patterns on the wall made the image interesting. I quite like it. This next image illustrates another way I compose with the X-Pen, where I just give up on just having one main focal point but deliberately having three. In this case, it's the guy crossing the street, the ice cream shop, and the red car. And if you haven't noticed yet, I really like shooting from across the street perpendicular to my subject. This way, I get to use interesting facades with geometric patterns to fill in my composition. It's a low-hanging fruit to be honest, and anybody can take the shot, but I love it when I'm able to add something unexpected into the mix, like a good lighting or this person riding along with a 360 camera on their helmet. Same idea here, I like the mural and the grungy wall, but the lady wearing pink really makes the shot unique. Here I wanted to capture something interesting using the buildings and the mural, but I got impatient because of the traffic and took the smash shot. At this point, I know that the next photo was my last shot of the roll, and I remembered that there was this set of colorful storefronts right next to each other close by. So I quickly went to it and took a shot. It's a shame that there was this car parked in front of the bookstore, but hey, I'll take what the street gives. I just waited for a cyclist to pass by and took this shot. I like it. satisfied with the result of this photo walk, I also recently used my x band with a roll of Orwo's Wolfen NC400, which is Orwo's newly released cinema film stock. I already showed some of the photos that I took during that photo walk at the beginning of this video, but I think I'm gonna make another one focusing more on the look of the film, so please subscribe or stay tuned if you're interested. I think I like shooting with the x band precisely because it is challenging. It keeps me engaged and attentive, and I feel more accomplished when I get a shot that I consider to be a keeper. Masochism aside, the look and feel of this camera also brings me joy, and that is something that I find very important when it comes to my art instrument. The build quality is amazing, the buttons and dials are satisfying to use, and the motorized shutter sound is distinctly memorable. Will I recommend this camera in 2023? Well. That's a tough question given how much the price of this camera has risen throughout the years. I mean, I was also on the fence about buying one for the longest time. It's an electronic camera after all, and at some point, it will become an expensive brick once the electronics die. They're also getting harder to repair these days as parts dwindle and Hasselblad and Fujifilm no longer service them. But if you have some extra dough lying around and you really want the experience of using it or owning one, then by all means, do what you will. Hey, I'm just a guy with too many cameras on YouTube. Don't let me tell you what to do with your money. No, <laughs> just, just don't. Anyways, if you want to check some low-cost alternatives to the Hasselblad x pan then check out this video that I made before I bought one. But that's it for this video. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you all again in the next one. Cheers.